What is going on guys? This is Kodash OG and welcome to my new series. It's called The Truth and it's where I'll be debunking rumors, myths, and uh, just general disinformation and misinformation about things that have to do with rogues and World of Warcraft. So uh, this first one is going to have to do with versatility and a lot of people think that versatility is the PvP stat or even worse uh, that it is resilience you know they're familiar with resilience or they remember resilience and uh, that is absolutely false on both counts it is not the PvP stat and in fact it's not even the best offensive stat or defensive stat for some classes and that's on a that's on a spec by spec and class by class basis and even comes down to you know what you're actually doing uh, but maybe let's take a step back first and talk a little bit about uh, why people think it's versatility is the PvP stat it's because it's weighted very heavily on the PvP gear and uh, you know it, it does do damage mitigation and rather than think about it like if I remember correctly without having to go back and somebody will probably correct me and be like yeah no the math is like this but if I remember correctly because it was a long time ago uh, resilience actually worked by decreasing your crit chance as well as decreasing your crit bonus damage so if you stacked it you hardly ever got crit and if you did there was no crit damage so basically you were never crit if you stack resilience uh, versatility actually you can it's better to think about it like adding armor right it's it's mitigating damage so they're two entirely different things and yes you can get versatility in uh, PvE and that's because quite literally like I, I you know I I'm specifically gonna approach things from a rogue perspective but let's say you played uh, Windwalker Windwalker just on just if you're gonna go out there and do you know increase your damage in general without coming up with a funky one-shot combo or you know trying to rising crane kick you know one-shot people and things like that uh, they're like for example Windwalker versatility it increases their damage uh, mastery for them increase like it increases their their damage based upon not using a, the same damaging move as they did before so it's on a class by class basis whether versatility and a, even a spec by spec basis like I said or just depending on what you're doing it's better or worse but for PvP for subtlety rogues in general you're trying to do the maximum amount of damage that you can in short windows all right uh, especially with how this iteration of subtlety is and for that uh, versatility is not that good so let's just jump into this uh, and lay the foundation for doing or giving yourself the uh, possibility to do big damage within short time windows or burst damage and uh, I guess we'll start with the official definition of mastery and the official definition of versatility and everybody should kind of know this if you play subtlety uh, but we'll go ahead and, and uh, if you don't know about it or haven't paid too much attention about it it says mastery executioner increases the damage done by your finishing moves by X percentage and versatility increases your damage and healing done by X percentage and decreases damage taken by half of X percentage. So that'll, that kind of lays the foundation of how the, the stats work. So now that we have the definitions uh, fresh in our minds of what versatility and mastery is, let's, uh, let's, let's find out where our damage comes from primarily. And I think if you, if you pull out your recount or if you have it, you'll find out both in PvE and PvP, Eviscerate is by far and away your primary damage as subtlety like it, it's it's not even comparable on occasion if you play like a Kari's it, it bumps it up into a, a range where a shadow strike will gain on it but eviscerate almost always is your by far and away your largest damager let's talk a little bit about uh, what a lot of people forget about now that we've addressed eviscerate uh, Let's talk about secret technique, and it's something that I've used personally in PvP since BFA, and uh, I actually don't use it hardly ever in PvE, which is what most people claim it's for. 
but it has some uh, nice characteristics. It will it has a short delay on it, so it follows your target. So if you get it off before right before Mage blinks, the damage will follow the target. Uh, it will also kill through like if you get it off right before a turtle shell or something like that, like an immune. It'll chase warrior warriors leaping away. Uh, and it all it will take what would be the AOE hits spread out and put it on one target and then that one target gets hit even harder as per the uh, the, the description of the attack. Let's see something else nice about secret technique is that it ha it matches really well with echoing reprimand which is really low energy anyway. It's 10 energy or echoing reprimand is 10 energy. Secret technique is 30 energy. So in the same time frame, if you if you're using the, the the conduit that gives you low cost cheap shots and kidney shots, uh, and then you use secret technique, essentially you'll get a free echoing reprimand for the same amount of energy in the same time frame, adding to your burst window. So you know where you're where you would be maybe running out of energy and you just didn't have that ten energy to have your to to use echoing reprimand. You can now with but by using secret technique in your in your opener instead of an eviscerate you now can get a free echoing reprimand with the same amount of energy in the same time frame using echoing reprimand and the uh the cheap shot reduction energy reduction conduit so that's that's there's multiple reasons to use secret technique it does hit really hard actually it hits harder than eviscerate a lot of times um on top of that so yeah as far as secret technique goes i use secret technique in my openers and have since bfa so contrary to what a lot of people will say like oh is this bad it's it's like aoe and whatnot no it's not bad and it's even better in places like arena where you're trying to isolate uh, a kill target and then do a massive amount of burst and obviously secret technique works off of mastery the same as any other finisher although like every other finisher, it also double dips uh, in mastery and versatility. So you're getting, I guess, the double benefit. But as, as I'll show you, mastery scales much better than versatility, especially for subtlety. So let's let's compare side by side how mastery scales and versatility scales. All right, so I have two rings here that have they're both enchanted plus 16 mastery because i had them both on at one point they they have within two points of each other mastery versus versatility so this first ring has 90 versatility on it and i have a flat 20 percent mastery with no gear and this has zero versatility so 90 points of versatility gives me two percent in versatility increase right so essentially that's saying it increases my ham damage and healing done. 90 points of versatility gives me 2.25% increase in damage and decreases damage by 1.2 or 1.12%. So half of that 2.25. Doesn't seem like very much, does it? Considering it takes up one of your 16 item slot spaces. Now, here's an 88 mastery ring. Remember, the first ring had 90 versatility. This has roughly that. I couldn't find a, a 90 mastery ring. But here's an 88 mastery ring, so it's only two points off. Right? I went from 20% flat mastery to 27% mastery. Right? And this increases my dan it says increases my damage done by by my finishing moves by 26.9%. So 27% is what it's saying. 27% and it takes up one of my 16 slots now keep in mind in a short damage window all right you're not trying to make up that that you know it would take basically 2% versus 7% in damage you're trying to do damage in short windows right you're not trying to make up that damage over the long run right by using shadow strike a bunch of times let's say because you're going to use it more times or whatever. Even then, even in Pve, PvE, your Eviscerate is still going to make more, do be your primary damage. But for that one spot in your gear slot, 16 slots, you're getting a 17 or a 7% damage increase 
over the primary move that you're trying to use versus a 2% damage increase, right? And it's not even your primary damager in a short window of time. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that basically, I mean, just from sheer damage alone, uh, mastery is over three times better for subtlety rogues than versatility as far as doing damage in short windows of time. Right, because I mean, you you want to pump out eviscerates as much as possible. And like I said, one thing a lot of people don't necessarily like, maybe they forget or whatever. But the finishing moves take advantage of both mastery and versatility. So you so it's double dipping in both those stats. So whatever versatility that you end up having, you know, that's still not a bad thing for your finishing moves because it's still actually increasing your finishing moves. We're just talking about. Master, which increases only your finishing moves. So that 2% of versatility from that ring, it's still counting towards my finishing moves and, and increasing my finishing moves. But you see how it scales three times less. So divesting heavily in versatility, you have to have three times the versatility and, and even more because, I mean, that's not even considering that Eviscerate is your largest damager in both the long term in a PvE sense and in the short term in burst windows like in PvP. So why would why would you not divest heavily in mastery? Some people are saying, well, I want to live longer, so I stack uh, versatility. There's all that damage mitigation. Well, let's just take a look at how much damage mitigation that actually is. So if you had 40k health, not uncommon if you have a pretty high item level, and you had 35% versatility, also not an uncommon number, uh, that would give you 17.5% damage mitigation. Well, with that, it, since it's not like resilience and some crazy math, it's pretty much like armor or giving you 7,875 extra health. Well, for a rogue, let's examine what it takes to eat up that extra versatility. And keep in mind, if you are fighting another rogue, you are, you're, it's not like a Windwalker where you're, it's really good for you. You're actually getting rid of, you're getting rid of your ability to do serious damage, right? You have to sacrifice mas mastery for versatility. Well, that 7,875 extra health you would get by stacking versatility or damage mitigation, in other words, what is that? That's one eviscerate. That's literally one eviscerate and not even a crit. One extra eviscerate. So is it really worth it for all that damage mitigation considering the damage you're giving up in mastery and how much it scales? And the fact eviscerate is your largest damager in both PvP and PvE? Uh, yeah, it's just not worth it. It's literally not worth it divesting super heavily as a subtlety rogue in versatility. But let's look at the let's actually look at the the major problem with this and why people go oh it's the PVP stat. But let's look at what what the PVP gear actually looks like. So let's just take a look at uh, the PVP vendor for the item level 200 conquest gear, and we'll take a look at the next since it's the most glaring example. And verse mastery for subtlety is best in slot beyond a shadow of a doubt, especially for PvP. But look at look at what the stats are in the sinful gladiators amulet and how those stats are uh, stats are weighted on that piece of gear. 60 stamina, 133 versatility, 39 mastery. The stat that affects your largest damager for a best in slot stats is barely even there. It's barely even thought of. Versatility, they've put in there three times more. And mastery scales over three times better for damaging. For eviscerate, your highest damager, what affects your eviscerate the most, they've put the least amount of stat on. So the, the stat templates that Blizzard has put together, like I said, they don't want you to actually have, they don't want you to actually have the ability to do really big damage, right? To do that, let's be real here, and a lot of people aren't gonna like to hear this, you're gonna have to find gear other ways, including doing some PVE if you truly wanna do, you know, serious damage in short time windows. Because it's, it's you're, you just have a PVP template with limited possible combinations and outcomes, and Blizzard knows that they haven't given you the best stats for subtlety anyway, 
but the PvP gear, literally, it, it encourages you to stack versatility, and it scales three times less as well than what affects your highest damager. So, uh, let's just take a look at my stat weights and what I'm doing. And I get gear from a variety of sources. A lot of PvE. I do have some, a couple pieces of Conquest gear and attempt to optimize my gear. And people who are using just the PvP suit and the unoptimized gear. Like I said, Blizzard knows that they didn't give you the gear to do really big burst damage. They know that. At least for subtlety rogues. It's got a hell amounts of versatility, so it's good for, it's good, obviously good for Windwalker, which is, like I said, probably part of the reason why Windwalkers are good right now. Uh, but I get my gear from a variety of sources, like I said. I'm sitting at 66% mastery, so I'm sitting, I'm playing with, bumping up against two of the, two of the DRs for my mastery. But, my finishing moves are getting buffed 66% by mastery alone plus another 14% from my versatility. And actually, I play at item level 207. I could go up to item level 208 or 9, but it's not as optimized a stat as this gear set for PvP. And I'm playing right now with super low haste because I want to play with Kyrian Bell. I, I guess this touches on two things, why I play Kyrian and also haste. If you don't know about haste, 11, like 11 or 12% is the breakpoint or the benchmark that you're trying to get to in haste because that's at the point where you're going to get an extra shadow strike so the closer you get to 11 percent the better because you're going to have plenty of energy and you're going to get an extra attack anything after that you're not really going to get an extra attack out of it in the same time window so that break point that you should be trying to get to is 11 percent if you play like at 10 9 or 10 It'll feel really good. Nobody will ever get out of stun locks. You'll have so much energy to just turn around and shadow step sap somebody, for example, without having to plan it, you know, or pool for it or something. So if you're playing like at 10%, it feels really good. For me to do that, I would have to drop, I think, 6% uh, flat mastery, and then I'd have to give up Kyrian Bell. And I guess if you don't know why you play Kyrian, well, they nerfed uh, Echoing Reprimand, so I can't, like, cheese one-shot people with Echoing Reprimand. Yeah, but it still gives you however much mastery, which they did actually nerf. And I'll show it, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you in PvP also, but uh, it still gives you mastery, but then you get the high, I you get access to the Kyrian-only high item level Kyrian Bell, which 57 flat agility, so it's a good flat stat. It's a good stat stick for the 194, which is the biggest one I've seen. I haven't seen anybody with an item level like 200 or 210 or anything like that. Like I've, per I personally have the biggest one I've ever seen. They probably exist, but I've never run across it. Uh, but you can only get that if you're Kyrian, and it gives you 670 mastery for nine seconds. For nine seconds, all right, 670 mastery. So what does that mean? Well, I have 66% flat mastery, right? Let's just use the Kyrian Bell, all right? So here's the Kyrian Bell. Now I have 110% mastery. Now with Echo and Reprimand, I have a 131% mastery. All right, and I understand that that's nerfed in PvP, and I'll show you what it is actually in PvP. So I can go from 66% mastery because I play Kyrian to 131% mastery in a short time window. Why is that important? Well, mastery scales the best and affects your eviscerate is your highest damage, right? Does the most amount of damage for you. Your highest damage, as far as burst goes, and uh, your most valuable is, right? 131% mastery. Think about that. And that's without, you know, trying to build up that high and get into the DRs that your flat stat weights will get in. Because I'm already bumping, I think they DR at 30%. And at 60%. And probably by the time I get up into 90% flat mastery, it probably would be worth it. It would be better for you to divest as far as sheer damage and versatility. But yeah, that's how I, you know, that's how I'm that's that's how I'm doing it. Okay, so here I am in instanced PvP. I'm in a battleground. Uh just to show you exactly what happens with the uh the ineffectiveness nerfs of stats. Battlegrounds. So right now I'm at 67% uh, 67 flat mastery, base mastery, and that means 53.4% uh, 
in instanced PvP. Now, with my Kyrian Bell, which is 670 mastery, that's 111. I'm up to 111% on the gauge and 89.2%. You know, that's how much actual mastery. 89.2%. That I have on use and I'll also show you uh, what happens in in combat that way you can see what happens in combat when I use the Kyrian Bell with Equine Reprimand Okay, so as you can see, 97.4% increase in mastery, stacking the Kyrian Bell Trinket at 194 and Echoing Reprimand. So that's a pretty great increase, you know, almost 100% increase on your finishers. In combat, no less. In instanced PvP. And the last thing before I wrap this up, I just kind of want to address the PvP Trinket. Some people will say, well, yeah, I've got the two-piece PvP Trinket, and that's good. Uh, but let's just say you had 35% versatility. You know, and the, the math is hidden on the PvP trinket set bonus, so you don't know if it's 35, or the bonus is 40% of that 35%, or if it's just a flat 40% boost. But best case scenario with the PvP trinkets, if you had 35% versatility, would be a 40% boost, right? Flat boost? It would only give you 75% damage, which is definitely not, you know, 100% damage, right? 97.4%, which would leave you making up that extra almost 25% damage differential given to you by mastery with combo point generators and versatility over the long run, which ends up being not burst damage anyway. So, uh, it, uh that, and which also, that 97% also doesn't take into account the 14% versatility that I have, you know, that I, that I still put on, uh, which makes you know, which makes my uh, my overall finisher damage one cooldown, thirty five energy or thirty energy in the case of secret technique. It makes it even more effective, right? It makes it, it makes your damages even bigger. Long story short, slot for slot. If you're lo if you're looking to make a glass cannon build, you know, and, and do maximum damage, stacking bunches of versatility as subtlety just really is not effective. I don't have the world's highest item level and whatnot, it's kind of on the low end. But what I've done allows me to kill people with uh, high versatility and better gear because I've kind of money balled it, if you will, with my gear. And the numbers get made up in the aggregate to where I can definitely kill, you know, gladiators and high armor plate and, and, and what have you. Probably much better than somebody who, let's say, has the same item level of gear, but they just put on the, the PvP suit template. And rather than throw a PvP video at you or just throw a video at you where I'm talking and I'm just showing you how much I kill people or whatever the case may be, uh, I thought I'd show you the numbers. That way you aren't saying, well, yeah, it could be uh, saltwater potions or, you know, whatever nonsense. Oh, well, that was just lucky or that guy has. Like, no, here's, here's the cold hard facts and here's the numbers. And um, the reality is, is that uh, versatility, depending on what you're doing, it depends on what you're doing. You know, if you feel like you need to be a little bit more tanky, stack some more versatility. Just realize that it's at a great, great loss of the ability to do damage. You know, I mean, mastery is that much more effective as far as do doing damage, short burst windows goes. So if you found this helpful or uh, you like like this sort of content, uh, let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And also check out my Twitch channel at uh, twitch.tv slash kodash og. And remember, never let them catch a hostel. Until next time.